Hello, my friends and colleagues. This is Dr. Rami Saloum. Today, I would like to thank all of you for taking the time to watch my previous presentation that I posted on YouTube. Because of you, my presentation got 1,000 views within 10 days. And I'm very thankful for this. I'm also very thankful for all the feedback I got from all of you regarding my method, all the encouragement, all the questions, all the hesitation. Some of the feedback I got is that you're requesting for your method to work, an accurate, verified model to be present. But how can we get that accurate, verified model? Or do you have an easier way? Or what is your way? And this is, today I'm going to be talking about my way of getting an impression done and making a model process. There's multiple ways of doing a model, There's multiple, way, multiple ways of taking impression, but today I'm going to speak about my method um, and I hope you will uh, find it uh, beneficial. But before I talk about model creation, I just want to um, review the previous presentation I made. Where I spoke about, in general, conversion, and the conversion process, what is conversion, that it is transitional fixed implant-supported prosthesis, that it is a significant step in a full arch uh, um, restoration. It's a prototype that the patient try and we confirm aesthetic function and um, um, uh, stability. And then I spoke about the different methods that are available to us to do conversion. I spoke about denture conversion, the stackable guided conversion, um, different shapes, scan bodies that some companies are making. I spoke about uh, a few clinicians are using fiduciary markers to help with merging scans. And then I spoke about briefly about the photogrammetry that it is accurate, but has limitation when it comes to soft tissue, midline, and sizal edge position. And that clinicians are adding or implementing a facial scanner and intraoral scanner to overcome those limitations. And then I spoke about my method, the rapid digital conversion method, um, that my method is distinguished by scanning a model instead of, of trying to scan intraorally. I spoke about scanning a model being easier and more predictable. And then I spoke about the ASA appliance, anterior scanning appliance device. That's dentist-made device we make by connecting two implants in the anterior region with resin and keep adding resin to that connection to establish the proper VDO with it and then mark the midline on that device. Then I spoke about the intraoral scanning process where we scan the opposing, scan the ASA, and then scan the bite. No soft tissue for the arch to be restored will be scanned. And then I spoke about the most important step in my method, which is tricking the scanner into scanning a model in occlusion. And to do this, uh, I spoke about moving the ASA appliance from the patient and install it on the model and go back to the scanner and ask the scanner to continue the scanning process. So we're just adding or finishing the scan that the scanner started intraorally and now we're finishing it on a model in our hand. I spoke about different kind of scan bodies that can be used. That there's really no preference on which scan body you can use on a model scan. But then I spoke about desktop scanner being still a gold standard. So I spoke about getting the same model and collecting one additional scan using a desktop scanner. And then merging data, merging that desktop scan we collected to mount it perfectly in occlusion. And I want to tell you, if you look at my method, there's only one merge is being done. During the whole process, only one merge. 
and that will simplify the process and also reduce the error. And then I spoke about briefly about the designing process, <coughs> how we have a full control over designing prototype and that we are going straight to the multi-unit using special screws like Rosen screws in my case. That going straight to the multi-unit will simplify the process of production. So there's really no parts being connected that simplify the process because we can print and deliver or mill and deliver. And if any modification is needed, midline need to be shifted and sizal edge position need to be longer. It's very easy to readjust the design we made and reprint it or remill it, stain it or verify it on the model first, then stain it, glaze it and deliver it to the patient. And then we spoke about the uh, process of reproducing the same prototype if the patient is happy with it and we are happy with it <coughs> and finalize it with the material of our choice. Verifying the final on the same model or another model that we create before we deliver it to the patient. And now I will speak about the process of making a model in my practice. And I, I can tell you that this is really after multiple attempts of creating a model or trying to overcome the challenges I was facing. And this is really, I found uh, uh, this way is the uh, easiest and uh, predictable. To do an impression, I connect the uh, temporary cylinders or the impression coping to the multi-unit abutment. And then the next step is I need to connect all those temporary cylinders. I need to create an instant verification jig. And to create an instant verification jig, I came with this uh, special design plates and I call them S plates. And, and with the S plates, uh, they are 3D printed resin plates. I print 50 of them. They are always available at my office for any day I need to take a good impression. And I can slide them on top of the temporary cylinders or the impression coping. And because they are resin, if they don't slide, I can just modify that resin until I can slide them in place. And then I can connect them or add pattern, resin, or flowable composite to the connection just to keep them stable and you can see I can do one S plate to connect two implants do the second one the third one and the fourth one in this case to make sure to make sure all those temporary cylinders or impression copings are connected the next step is I add more resin to that connection just to confirm that it's really stable and what I do then I will take this device out and screw it, look from inside, add more resin on the inside because I don't want any voids, I don't want any movement. And then I can put this instant verification jig back in place. And you can tell that it is passive when it's seated. You can feel it with Explorer. You have access to all the connection. And for any reason, if that verification jig is rocking or it's not stable, you can cut the resin and add resin to it. The same way you do with the verification jig. When this process is done, now I do the two-stage or two-step impression technique. Trayless impression technique. I don't use tray for those kind of cases. What I do, I start with a putty material and I mix it and then I slide it or install it on the palatal side or the lingual side if it's a lower. I hold it in place until it's set. <coughs> then I can slide it out. And then I will trim any interference between the putty material the temporary cylinders or the ridge. I want to create a space for my light body wash to go around all the temporary cylinders and give me a good 
final impression. After I trim it, I slide the body back in place, I dry it, and then I use light body wash from the vestibule side to make sure that I'm crabbing or I'm capturing good impression. It takes me 10 to 20 minutes to do the whole process. 30 minutes if there's any challenges. Then what we do is we connect the lab analog to the temporary cylinders. Use soft tissue replica. And then use the same S plates to connect all those lab analog. So I adjust the S plate for them to slide in place. I start connecting them with adding pattern resin to them. And then I add more resin. And adding resin in increment will minimize the amount of shrinkage in the resin curing process. And this is my final accurate resin model. Because I like verification, I can tell you in so many cases, I was doing multiple models. For me, if the time is not sensitive, if I can do a stone model, I will doing, I'm doing stone model. If the time is sensitive for immediate cases, I'm doing um, resin model. Did I see any difference between both of them? Not necessarily. With this slide, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I hope I will see you in the future. Thank you so much.